Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome back to my course uh, aspects of biochemical engineering. In the last uh, couple of lectures, we uh, I try to um, uh, discuss the microbial cell growth kinetics with respect to substrate degradation and product formation. We uh, we discuss different batch processes, continuous processes as for example, chemo CSTR and plug flow reactor and uh, fed batch reactor. Then we discuss several uh, problems, numerical problems related to the microbial growth kinetics or product formation. Now, this uh, present lecture, we are going to discuss a very special aspects of the of the biochemical engineering. I told you at the beginning, the purpose of engineering is kind of application, application of the science. Am I right that scientifically we can develop? some kind of <coughs> uh, special thing in the in the lab and uh, when you applied to the for the use of the society the engineering application is required the how we can transfer that information from the lab scale to the commercial scale <coughs> so the present topic that i am going to discuss today that is the scale up of bioreactor because you know that suppose <laughs> as for example suppose uh, so, uh, somebody is working with uh, penicillium chrysogenum for the production of penicillin and uh, he developed one particular good microbial strain and, and, and also did some kind of process optimization for maximization of the penicillin production. But uh, he might have carried out the experiment in the test tube or the conical flux in the or small fermenters, maybe to the extent of 2 liter or 10 liters that is located in the lab. But when you go for the industrial scale, it is very high. This is might be uh, 100 cubic meter, 100 cubic meter means 100,000 liters or 200 cubic meter means 200,000 liters. So, it is very <laughs> big. Now, question comes, whatever <coughs> when, you, when you do the scale up, one thing we shall have to take into account that whatever environmental condition, whatever condition prevailing in the small reactor, similar condition should prevail in the bigger reactor. This is the main purpose of scaling up and so that your organism should work in a similar manner and to give the product. So, for doing so that uh, what we, we are going to analyze how the different operational parameters changes to maintain the identical situation. So, this uh, particular uh, lecture will deal with that and, uh, and let us start with the definition of scale up. Now, if you look at the definition of scale up, scale up is the study of the problem associated transferring data from the laboratory to pilot equipment to the industrial uh, production. So, what I want to tell you that we cannot transfer uh, we cannot use the whatever conditions that we have operating operational conditions we have in the smaller reactor similar conditions uh, will be applicable in the bigger uh, fermenters. So, you know that uh, con operation conditions will be changed. So, to maintain the similar type of environment. So, this particular scale up deals with that. Now, uh, the main purpose that similar environmental conditions are to be built up both for the small and the higher scale to get the desired product. This is the main purpose of doing the scale up. As for example, oxygen transfer is obtained the rate limiting step in the aerobic bioprocess due to low solubility of oxygen in the media. Because we know that microorganism can take the oxygen which is dissolved in the liquid, not like human beings. We take the oxygen which present in the air. So, and, and since the oxygen is sparingly soluble in water, so major bottlenecks 
of major or major limitations we have with the aerobic fermentation process is the uh, dissolved oxygen concentration. So, um, that uh, that is considered as the rate limiting sense. So, the volumetric mass transfer coefficient KLA is a crucial step in the design and operation and scale up of bioreactor. So, when you do the scale up, we keep it in mind the KLA that we have in the small reactor and KLA that we have bigger reactor that should be more or less same. So, that we can we can we can, we can build up uh, we can give the similar uh, re we, we can fulfill the similar requirement for the microorganism. Now, let us consider the scale up how how do the scale up that uh, first we do in the laboratory scale that is whatever we, we develop in the lab scale then it comes to the pilot scale because just to we elaborate as for example, suppose here we, we, we may start with conical flux of capacity 100 milliliter, then 500 milliliter, then 2 liter, then 10 liters, but after that we go for pilot scale, maybe pilot scale may be as high as maybe <coughs> 1000 1, liters or so and then we will go for the industrial scale maybe 10, uh, 10 100,000 liters or you know maybe 200,000 liters of the industrial scale. So, we want to find out that how the operational parameters keep on changing during the scaling up of the process. Now, purpose of the scale up, purpose of the scale up is the pilot's uh, plant allow the investigation of a product and the process of a intermediate scale before large amount of money are committed uh, to the commercial scale. So, we, we, we do agree that when you run any kind of process at a small scale, the monetary involvement of the process will be very less, am I right? Now, when you go to the bigger scale, then monetary involvement will be very high. So, naturally, uh, when we go for the high investment, there, there should be confidence on the investor that whatever uh, report we get in the small scale, same should be available in the bigger scale. So, it is usually pos not possible to predict the effect of manifold increase in the scale. Suppose, whatever data we have in the small scale, we cannot just multiply and find out that this might be suitable for this process, this is not possible. As the size of the fermentation increases during scale up, various parameters do not show predictable linear correlationship. That is the major problem, there, there is no linear correlationship certain parameter change, certain parameter remain constant, some parameter need to be modified, adjusted during the scale up study. So, these are the couple of things that we should have to keep in mind and final objective of the scale up is to achieve the similar fermentation efficiency. This is very important, this is very very important that whatever efficiency we get in the small scale, same efficiency we should get in the bigger scale, often in the small scale to the most at the, uh, at the most uh, economical values. So, this, uh, this is the very <coughs> important aspects of scale up. Now, uh, parameters involved, now question come how you do the scale up, literally when you do the scale up, we, we shall have to consider certain parameters and what are the parameters we should consider during the scaling up of the process. So, first we have the physical concept, that the physical property of the broth media composition, temperature, pH, dissolved oxygen concentration, etcetera in geometrically similar and fully baffled uh, fermenter are assumed to be same. I told you, you can remember that most of the fermenter we required baffle. Why you required baffle? Because if you do not have baffle, then <coughs> there will be vortex formation. Here, you will there will be no vortex formation, but if you have uh, the starter here, then you will find this uh, kind of vortex formation. Now, if you have vortex formation, now when you do kind of aeration here, you look at the air that is suppose this is air in. So, he, here the air will get less, uh, le, the will, 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 will less the retention time as compared to here. So, when bubbles goes like this, here it will take more time, here it will. So, so mass transfer 
that depends on the retention time. The here, since the level is the liquid level is almost constant, even if your bubbles goes out, the retention uh, time of the bubbles will be more or less same. So, this is one of the important aspects. The microbes are assumed to be well dispersed in fully turbulent uh, system. So, we know the microorganism, they are insoluble mass and they should be well dispersed so that the uh, substrate can freely interact with the microorganism and give the product. Now, parameters influence uh, the liquid behavior of the agitated vessel are one is the power requirement by the agitator, power requirement agitator with gas system, rotational speed of the impeller and pumping rate of the impeller. So, so there are uh, several parameters that uh, you know plays important role uh, during this uh, process. One is the power. Now, what is the power requirement? I told you that you know power requirement, power uh, most of the power is consumed by the agitator. Agitator. How much is power required for mild agitation? If you consider mild agitation, mild then power requirement is about 1 HP horsepower per cubic meter volume of the reactor. Now, suppose uh, somebody is want to operate 200 cubic meter reactor. So, power drawn by the agitator will be as high as 200 HP, the huge power that, uh, that uh, has to. So, you know that so, uh, more power that more monetary investment, investment is there. So, uh, our, our purpose of the scale up also we shall have to look into what is should be the minimum power requirement in the agitator to get the maximum amount of product. This is also another, another very important thing. Now, another important thing is the gas system and non-gas system. Suppose, this is, this is, uh, this is a starter. Now, when it is starting like this here, the naturally power drawn by the agitator will be more. Now, here if you have some kind of air that you, you flow in the system air in and air out, this is air out, then the due to the aeration there will be the kind of turbulence, the kind of movement of the water and due to this that you know that power requirement of the starter will be, uh, it will be less as compared to the on gas system. So, this is the gas system power requirement and rotational speed of the starter that also plays very important role because, because as the bubble uh, is going out, then if you increase the rotational speed, then one bubble will disintegrate into the smaller bubbles. This is all smaller bubbles and more smaller bubbles that means more surface area. So, if the, if the surface area is increases, then what will happen? Your roof, there will be more mass transfer. Okay. Now, there is the this pumping rate that is the what do you call the addition rate that you know how more how how this is usually expressed as VBM. What is VBM? VBM is VBM is the I told you this is volume of air per volume of media per minute. Now, let us see how you can calculate the power requirement by the agitator. Now, this is the this is the this is what we call this uh, power number. Power number equal to P is the power drawn by the agitator, N is the agitational speed, D i is the diameter of the impeller and rho is the density. Now, now for a for a particular type of there are different there are different types of agitator, am I right? And for different type of editor, agitator at different Reynolds, uh, the, the Reynolds number, they have uh, what is Reynolds number? Reynolds number that indicate the flow characteristics of the fluid. Now, if we have different uh, this power uh, power number. So, power number basically constant for a particular agitator at a particular Reynolds number. So, what we can write that if this is constant, then we can write power is proportional to n cube d i to the power 5. Now, another thing I want to point out that suppose volume, volume of the reactor, how you can calculate? This is pi r square h, am I right? What is r? r equal to I can write r I, I, I can write r equal to d by 2 whole square, am I right? 
Now, for a particular fermenter, there is a fixed H by D ratio. This is usually may be 3 is to 1, 1 2 is to 1 or you know some fixed ratio is there. Now, if you if you if you like this, the, then I can write H equal to 3 D. So, I can I can replace by 3 D am I right. So, this is basically if you look at this the D V is usually is proportional to D cubed. Now, in a particular fermenter, uh, particular fermenter if you look at this is the fermenter. Now, this is the hesitator, this is called diameter of the hesitator and this is called diameter of the tank. So, there is a ratio between D and D i, may be D equal to <coughs> that 3 into D i, whatever may be 2 into D i, whatever is there. So, what I want to say, say to tell the D is proportional to D i. If D i is proportional to I can write V is proportional to D i to the power cubed, am I right? Now, if it is d i to the power cubed, then if we here if you write p by v, p by v if you write, then what you can write? This is proportional to n cubed d i to the power 5 divided by d i cubed. So, this will be n cubed d i square, am I right? So, we can easily find out, we can find in the next page it is there. Now, I was talking about the gas system and on gas system this is the ratio, this is proportional to aeration number. Now, what is the aeration number? Aeration number is the apparent velocity of the gas per unit surface area. This is the surface area, surface area what is the unit per unit length. So, d i square I can easily write and this is the tip velocity of the impeller. The tip velocity of the impeller how you can determine? This is like this, <coughs> suppose this is d i am I right? So, what is the perimeter of that wise? pi r, this is equal to pi into d i, am I right? This is i. Now, suppose n number of rotation per minute is there, so you multiply it by n. So, we can write that rotational that steep velocity of the impeller is is proportional to n into d i, n into d i, because pi is constant. Now, now if you do is solve this equation, then we find f the aeration rate <coughs> that is equal to proportional to n d i cubed. Now, uh, this I have already shown you, I do not like to discuss again, again this is how this is equal to, how this is equal to d i cubed and, <coughs> and uh, this is b equal to d i cubed that I have already shown you. Now, here I also shown you that how the p by v ratio is this, then f this also I, I have shown you. Now, f by v that f is f is what? f by v will be what? f by v is proportional to n d i cube, am I right? and this is d i volume is proportional to d i cube. So, this this will cancel. So, this will be equal to n. So, this is proportional to n. This is what is given here. Now, <coughs> this is the t velocity I have already shown you how it has come and the Reynolds number. What is the Reynolds number? Reynolds number is r e d u rho by mu, am I right? Where d is the diameter of the impeller, because one thing we should remember in case of <laughs> in case of any kind of vessel, the hesitation we call it <laughs> that hesitation Reynolds number. This is not the normal Reynolds number. What is the normal Reynolds number? When suppose liquid is passing through a pipeline, that Reynolds number is this, but when you have a vessel, this is a vessel and this is a <coughs> this is a this is your starter. So, when when this starter is moving due to the movement of the starter, what is happening that a liquid also moving, am I right? So, this uh, the flow characteristics of the liquid is due to the movement of the starter. So, since it is due to the movement of the starter, we consider it as a hesitated Reynolds number, we should remember that. Now, this is equal to d i 
and what is the tip velocity of the air? The velocity, uh, uh, this is already we have find out n into d i, this is rho into mu. So, I can write R e equal to is proportional to, these are constant for a particular liquid, this is the viscosity, this is the rho is the density. So, we can write n d i square, this we can write. This is exactly what we have written here. So, <coughs> the Reynolds number equal to n d i because uh, now let me show you that uh, how how the different uh, parameters we can calculate during the scale up now here we have uh, three four different instances we can find out that one case p by v ratio is constant another is n is the constant another is n di is constant another reynolds number is constant so p by v is the power per unit volume of the reactor that is constant n is the rotational speed of the a uh, starter is constant and there is the n d i, n d i is that uh, tip velocity of the starter that is constant and r is the Reynolds number. Now, now if, if, this, if, if the, the first case p by v is constant, am I right? Now, let me show you that if I, if I, if I keep p by v constant that, uh, that what will happen? This is p 1 v 1 equal to p 2 v 2. Okay, okay. I can write like this. Now, this is n 1 cubed d i to the power 5 divided by d i to the power cubed. Am I right? This is equal to I can write n 2 d 3 d i, this is d i 1, this is d i 2 to the power 5 and this is d i 2 cubed. So, if you if you if you if you if this will we can cut and this will be d i 1 square and this will be d i 2 square. So, what is the equation you will get n 1 cubed d i 1 square equal to n 2 n 2 d i 2 square. So, I can write n 2 by n 1 equal to <coughs> d i 1 by d i 2 to the power 2 by 3. Am I right? That uh, we can we can write like this. So, uh, what is the what is the d i value 1? What is d i 2 value is 5. So, we can we can write this is 2 by 3 and it will come around about 0 0.34. So, what does it indicate? That in a in a big in a small scale your uh, what is the what is the rotational uh, speed we have this is uh, that uh, if it is 1 and then in the n2 in the bigger scale is coming 0 0.34 am i right so i i can i can give another is instance where the how how that uh, other parameter has come the di parameter has come so, if you write v 1 by v 2, what is happen v 1, what is the capacity 80 liters, am I right? This is 10,000 liters. Now, <coughs> this is equal to, I can write d i cubed, d i 1 cubed and this is d i 2 cubed, am I right? And this is equal to 1 by 1 to 5, 1 to 5. Then, one, what is 1 to 5? It is 5 cubed. So, I can write d i 1 d i 2 this is equal to 1 by 5. So, d i 2 will be what? d i 2 will be equal to 5 into d i 1. So, this is why since d i 1 is 1. So, that is why we put d i value is 5. Similarly, we can calculate other parameters like in in, in 1 into uh, into d d i 2 because we know now you know the value of n 2 and we now we know the value of d i 2. So, we can easily find out the uh, speed of the uh, the t, uh, that you know <laughs> the rotational speed of the tip velocity of the starter. Now, Reynolds number Reynolds number is equal to what? Reynolds number is equal to n 2 for the bigger reactor a d i 2 square. So, um, this is proportional to that. So, the we know n 2 value, we have d i 2 value. So, we can we can easily calculate 
the value of Reynolds number. Now, f by v ratio that uh, what is equal to this is n. So, n value already we calculated. So, we can already report. Now, f equal to what? n into v. We know the uh, what is the volume of the reactor, what is the n value. So, we can easily find out the uh, the f value. So, like this we can calculate all the values that uh, we during the scaling up of the process. We can calculate all the values. So, uh, next case is that n equal to n 1 equal to n 2 and second case d i 2 this is n d i 1 is equal to n d i 2. So, now one thing I want to stress here that d i 2 value in all cases should be same because scale arm is same. So, we assume the geometrical configuration is remain almost constant. Now, uh, the another very important factor that we have the biological concept of the of this uh, scaling up of the process. Now, in the what is the biological concept that as your power uh, you, you input power increases per unit volume, uh, it increases the KLA value. What is KLA value? KLA, KLA value is the volumetric mass transfer. Now, here we want to uh, we have shown here that uh, uh, here you see that K L F value volumetric mass transfer this is P by V ratio. Now, as it is increases your product concentration increases then it attain the plateau. So, what I why, what I conclude that if you if you uh, if you use this power after this power uh, this uh, this uh, your product concentration remain constant. So, we know more you spend power more more money we shall have to spend for the process. So, it will be more expensive. So, biological concept is that what is the minimum power is required to get the maximum amount of product. So, here this kind of hyperbolic pattern is generally observed fermentation regardless the microbial species present in bacteria yeast and fungi. Now, I have given some typical example one is in the penicillin fermentation process. Now, uh, carried out for 108 hours of fermentation and when we pl pl plotted the power input in the starter, I told you that, uh, uh, that uh, power drawn by the agitator in the fermentation industry is much high because we got 1 HP that uh, per cubic meter volume of the reactor, this is usually the case. Now, here we will find in case of penicillin fermentation process that if the power drawn by the agitator 1.5 here you can see 1.5 then we will get the maximum amount of product. But if we, if it is less than 1 HP per this here that you there is a trend is less than that then then then, uh, then power that uh, that you know product concentration that is uh, decreases. The next example we I have with the streptomycin fermentation process. Now, here I try to correlate this volumetric mass transfer coefficient. The product of volumetric uh, oxygen transfer coefficient and total pressure influences the streptomycin fermentation process. Now, this is the volumetric uh, that oxygen transfer rate and that the P t is the total pressure. Now, as it is the changes the relative concentration of the streptomycin changes like this. So, after some time it attains the plateau, am I right? So, here we get the maximum amount of streptomycin production. So, what is written that you know 5 to 6 10 to the power uh, minus 4 gram mole of oxygen per milliliter per hour will give the maximum amount of product formation. So, in this particular lecture I try to uh, discuss that uh, du during the scale up of the bioreactor, how the different operational parameter changes. And I told you when you do the scaling up of the any kind of reactor, we take into account whatever conditions we have in the small scale, similar conditions should prevail in the bigger scale of fermentation process, so that our product concentration remain unaltered. Thank you very much.